Good morning, everyone. You guys can hear me. Someone please give me a little raised hand, maybe. Awesome, awesome. Thank you all for joining us today. I do anticipate this being quick, easy, and painless. Um, it's been a while since we've gotten everybody together and kind of talked to you uh, about the program. I want to say that I am very excited with the work you guys have been doing, that um, uh, we're glad we're able to kind of provide some uh, funding for you guys to expand some of your programs, for some of you even to start new projects. So I hope you um, take what you have learned, work with this federal program to give you a little bit of um, courage, right? To go after some additional funding um, on the federal level. Just make sure that you always keep your sandbox uh, active if you're gonna pursue other funding. And um, and some of the things that we guys had to require, require you guys to do like maintaining your time and effort and having all that, just all that paperwork documented. It's gonna be the same if you ever go after any federal or state grant. So um, I hope that was a good training for you if you are not already accustomed to doing that type of thing, um, of things you have to do to go after uh, larger pots of money on the state and on the federal level. But what we're gonna talk about today is just a little bit of the things we sent out to you guys in email, just to kind of re reiterate those things and also to explain to you why those things are so important. And one thing in particular we're going to do is uh, change something on your game that's going to require your signature for us to make that change. So let me go ahead and make share my screen. And we will get started. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat um, and uh, I'll take some time to answer them. Uh, Christy, uh, if you were one of the team members, if you see a question in there that is uh, related to what I'm talking about, just jump in and stop me or raise your hand and I'll know to address that at that time. And we'll also have time at the end to take questions, not just questions on this program, on this presentation, but if you have some questions in general that I did not address, or if you have a program specific question you want to ask, um, ask of me particularly, I can hang around after the meeting so we can kind of have that conversation as well. Um, as everybody is aware, uh, ARPS or funds are ending. They are going away. There is going to be no reauthorization. The funding is not coming back. They have already declared that the pandemic is over. And I think the federal government and Congress and everybody wants to put that behind us and move forward. So they're not providing any additional funds for ARPS. So there's no more money coming down the pipeline for this particular um, funding, for this particular funding. The deadline for us, um, for all ARPS activities is September 30th, which means um, there's the programs in, right? School district programs in, state level programs in, all programs in on September 30th. However, there is a time for um, liquidation between September 30th and December 30th that we can still pay invoices and pay claims. However, what is happening is because that deadline is September 30th, um, we are looking at ways to uh, make sure we spend as much money as possible. There were three pots of ESSER funding, ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and then this ARP ESSER. For both ESSER 1 and ESSER 2, our office was able to spend 97% or, or more of the funds, right, which is great. Because um, they let the feds know that not only did South Carolina need the money, that South Carolina spent the money. So we want to be able to maintain that same type of record moving forward with ARPS or because ARPS was actually $3.7 billion. So because of the initiative, um, you guys, we can see looking at your most recent reporting, and I believe we sent some letters out to some of you. You guys have a lot of money left. Some of you have a lot of money left. So what will happen is if that money is not spent by the end of your after school programs or your summer programs, that money is then reverted back to the feds. And it shows that that's funding that we did not spend here in the state of South Carolina. And that is something that we don't want to happen if we can help it. So what we're going to do is change your project and your, your project um, end date and your budget end date. So what does that mean? Right now on your GAN, you have a end date, a project end date, and a budget end date of September 30th, 2024. We are going to be reissuing new GANs out to you all to make your new project end date and your new program end date August 2nd, 2024. That in no way interferes with anything you guys are doing because some programs, as we said in the RFP, have to be completed by May 30th. So those programs will be ending next week. 
if you only, if you have after school only, you're pretty much be done with us anyway, right? All your programs will be over. As I said in the RFP, your summer projects had to be over by June 30th. Uh, I'm sorry, July 30th. So even with the August 2nd end date, um, and we, you're still within your, you know, we're still with honoring the RFP. You still have through, through June 30th, actually, because July 30th is in the middle of the week. We're giving you those two extra days um, in August um, to finish out that week. So nothing will change. Your your programs won't change. Your, your, your budgets won't change. Nothing will change. All we're trying to do is get as many claims in and process as quickly as we can on the chance that there is remaining funding. For example, if your program has $400,000 to spend for summer school and you only spend $250,000, so in July 30th, you're done. You've only spent $250,000. So there's another $150,000 that's still sitting out there. If your program doesn't end until September, if the project end date is not till September, I cannot touch that money because legally it is still your money until September 30th, which means then it just sits there and I cannot reallocate it to another project. However, if your project end date is August 2nd, and once you get all your claims in, we're asking all claims to be in, I think, by August 15th, once all your claims are in, we're going to send you out a, a uh, certification for you to say, I have submitted all my claims. Everything has been paid. You don't owe us any money. If that's the case and you do that, you do that, that 150000 that you had left over, I can then move it to another project and get it spent. It won't be another initiative project. It may be another state level project or to buy um, something else on the state level that we're going to push down to the school districts. We do not want to end up with a million dollars in funding left over from the initiative because looking at your records, some of you have quite a bit of money remaining. So what I'm also to say, if you uh, are going into the summer, you need to redo your budget to add more activities, to do more um, allowable activities, to do more uh, service, pro uh, bringing more service providers. Go ahead and start making those amendments now um, to get those things approved so that you can spend as much of your money as you can. So if you don't spend all your money, it is fine. It's not a problem at all. If you do spend all your money, it's better. It's even great. I don't want any money to come back. But for those of you who are finishing up your after school projects, if you have not spent all your money, it is okay. Those of you going to the summer, if your budget is not going to take up all your money, that is okay. All we're going to do is change that end date to August 2nd, which gives me the flexibility to move that money to another program um, in my office that needs the money. Okay. I'm going to stop right here and ask if there are any questions from the folks on the call to please raise your hand. And I think we can try to unmute you or you can unmute yourself. Are there any questions on this particular thing? See any hands going up? Anything in the chat? I don't see anything. So moving forward. Um, so what we'll do when we get those scans completed, the only change would be would be the change in the date. Your money amount will be the same. Everything will be the same. It will just and maybe some some changes because we have we had done we've done some updates so again. But they won't affect your project, your programs, or your funding at all. We'll change that date from September 30th to August 2nd. We sign that in and get that back into us. As I said, um, the last day for all claims to be in. Once that date comes, we'll probably wait till August 30th because there may be some back and forth on some things we may have questions on. Uh, we'll send you um, a attestation where you can sign to say uh, everything has been spent, and that will free me up to move your funds. See, I did see a chat come in. Can we use it for a school? No, uh, 24, 25. Um, the program ends September 2024, so there won't be any. We're not running through school year 24, 25. Um, for your after school programs, it was just for, for uh, after school programs for 2022, 23, and 23, 24. So there would be no funds, no no time to, to do anything in 24, 25. Thanks for the question, Ms. Laura. Right, the program is ending. 
I, we can't go up to 20, 24, 25. I cannot spend any more extra money after September 2024. Anywhere, not in school districts, not on state level. There's no money. Yeah, the whole program, literally my office shuts down October 1, right? So um, my team and so far has thrown up from 15 folks down to five because this program is ending. Um, after school programs, just a reminder for, um, from your letter, if you are running an after school program uh, right now, um, your last day for uh, programming is May 30th um, of this year. Again, that was in your original RFP for our summertime. And you must submit all those after school programs into class by June uh, 28th of 2024. Uh, there'll be no uh, claims reviewed after that time. What I recommend you do is do not hold your claims. Um, in the past, lots of you have held your claims and submitted these uh, large amounts or large claims, which is fine. The team is great. They try to get them out to as quickly as we can. But in order for us to make sure we're spending the money correctly and, the, and things are flowing as quickly as you have things ready, you can submit them. Um, Michael and Al's probably saying, don't say that, Tanya, because I don't have to do the claims. <laughs> but there are folks that submit claims almost daily. You know, some programs submit claims every week. So um, the the more often you get your claims in there, the more often we can get those things processed and get them back out to you and start ending this, cutting this program to an end. On that note, let me go back and say, we've had some folks um, uh, asking about class wallet and it's taking longer for them to get their, um, their deposits. The original, we went back to look at our original contracts, our original programs, our original um, information put out. It's always been two to 10 days to get reimbursements from Class Wallet. We've just been fortunate that Class Wallet has been getting them out to us within two or three days. For some reason, they've been able to get it out quickly. So the last um, couple of reimbursements, I think, it's been taking maybe four or five days. Um, we contact them, they're like, yeah, but our time is two to 10 days. So they're still within their, um, time period. It's just taking a little longer. I don't know why it's taking longer. I don't know what happened. But there's nothing we can do because they are still within their time frame of two to 10 days. I believe um, the last thing was some folks claims if it got to be on the 21st or 22nd, it would be outside of that time. And then I could probably step in and do something. But long as it's within the two to 10 days, it's within their time frame. They've just spoiled us all by getting things out a little bit quicker. So I just want to put that out there that we did check into that for you. Um, for you guys who are starting your summer programs, um, those programs must be completed on or before July 30th. Actually, I'm going to change that date to August 2nd because July 30th, I think, is a Wednesday. So to allow you guys to have that full week, we will change that for July, um, for August 2nd. So make a note, Christy, for me that we need to send that correction out in emails. So they'll have it in writing as well. So we're going to make that, that change for you guys to give that last full week um, of July. And, as, and I know some of you have reached out to us and have begun making purchases for your summer as early as early May. Any of those receipts and stuff you have, go ahead and submit them to Class Wallet, right? You don't have to hold them. We know it's summertime. We know it's May. We know it's your summer budgets. Go ahead and send those things to us as quickly as you can. Um, Danielle, that's that would not be it. Those, Class Wallet is huge. Um, they, that's a whole different, um, a whole different section of class wall that's handling that. Um, we did have that discussion with them as well, because we thought the same thing. But it's not. It's a whole different. It's a different entity handling that. Different part of class wall handling that. It's what they told us. Um, all claims for summer programs must be submitted to class wallet by August 30th. So make sure you get them in. We understand that there may be some issues with your claims, but and what we've started doing now is when we reject claims, if something's not completed because we have so many things coming in, if you submit a claim to Class Wallet and when Mike, Michael and Alex go to review them and they are not, they're missing something, I have instructed them to reject it and send it back. And that way you guys can resubmit it as a new claim. Because what happens is Class Wallet does not let us know when you add new things to the claim. So they have to keep going back and looking. So in order for us to keep things moving faster and for them not to have to keep going back looking every other day into this claim, we're just rejecting the claim. You send it back in as a new claim and we'll go ahead and approve it at that time. So that's going to um, that's going to continue through September.
Yes, we will send out the PowerPoint and a recording um, for this as well. For the reports, um, you must submit your final report, report by September 5th. Um, so, you know, all of your claims should be in the system, everything, you know, hopefully by then we'll have been going back and forth. We've got everything in. Um, so we're asking you to submit that final report um, on September 5th. Now, here's a little caveat that's going to be different. It is normal that you guys submit your claims to us based on what has been reimbursed back to you from Class Wallet, because it kind of shows us what money has actually been spent, right? Because everything else is still in the pending status. But for this claim only, for this quarter report that's due in September, right? I think, is there another one due in July? Not the one in, that's due in July. Is there one due in July? Or there's another one due at some point. Not that one. But just for this one, for September 5th, I want you to put in there everything that's even pending. I want to see how much of your money has already been spent. Even if the claims are going to, you know, they may not, they may be rejected or or whatever the issue is. And that September 5th quarter report, put in everything you received in this quarter from Class Wallet plus everything that's still out there pending. Okay. Just show everything that is due to you, what has been paid to you, and what is also due to you. Add that all together and put that in, in that last report. Any questions about that? Raise your hand or drop me a chat. We're kind of crippled today because Jennifer's not here and she normally does all of this stuff for us, so she has those spoiled. So, um, see, no questions. Everybody should be clear on that. And Christy, make a note, we'll add that to the email with the corrected end date for summer projects. Just a reminder, um, at school funds cannot be used to pay for employees for services rendered after May 30th. What that means is if the program ends on May 30th, you have teachers and at school, you know, tutors, whomever, we can pay them May 30th, even if that payroll happens in June. It's okay because you're still paying them for the services that were rendered prior to May 30th. But I can't pay any after school projects for after school staff beginning June 1st. Okay. Um, ARPS or funds cannot be used to pay employees for services rendered after July 30th. Again, we're going to change that date to August 2nd. So even um, we can only pay for services up until that date. OK, there can be no services after that date. The payroll can run after that date, but it has to be for the services prior to August 2nd. And as I said earlier, please submit as often as you can so that we can get those claims in and out in a timely fashion. Um, as I you know, we have folks that do submit almost daily. Some folks submit weekly and we have some folks that submit every two months or so, which is fine when we had, you know, months in, to work on this. As we get closer to when we get down to August, we have a month, right? So we want to make sure we get your claims in, that we have a chance to review them, and that we have a chance to go back to you with issues if we need to. So the quicker you can get claims into us, the more um, the quicker we can get claims processed for you. Um, also, if you have any field trips, if you already know what your field trips are, go ahead and get those field trips into us. Um, I recommend that you, uh, if it's a field trip that has food included in the admissions, please pull that out. Right, don't don't let the artists find out that you guys paid for food uh, when this program closes, because then you have to pay that money back. So we cannot pay for food. Let's not do that. Make sure we're only we're using the state rate for the mileage. Um, uh, we're only paying for student admission for field trips, not for adults. Let's keep that in mind as well. Um, if you do not have a contract or MOA for a particular provider, please make sure you get that. Uh, if you're making any changes this summer for your programs, if you have a new provider. Make sure you get that MOA into us as quickly as you can so we can have that on file. If you had to do a new lease or, you know, a new rental, whatever, anything that's new that's different from this summer that you didn't do last summer that you had an MOA on, if it needs a new MOA, please submit that. Okay? It's very, very important. Um, if you have any questions, as always, give us a call at ESSER. Give us an email at ESSER reporting. Um, I, those emails are monitored daily. Uh, we try to have a 24-hour turnaround. Um, 
I kind of check, spot check it myself to ensure the 24 hours turn around. And the team will tell you, I'll say, hey, there's an email out there, nobody answered. So uh, we do try to stay on top of that. Um, so if you have any questions, whatever, I see one here, let's see. Yes, ma'am. If you don't, if you're just uh, after school only, uh, you can go ahead and submit that to report to us in July and then we'll be done. We can go ahead and close out your account. Um, and that 775 uh, report will be your final report. So if you have an after school only program, um, you can submit your, your final report on July 5th. Are there any other questions? Uh, Alex, Michael, did I miss anything? Christy, did I miss anything? Uh, I don't think you straight. did. All righty. Any questions from anybody? Any issues? Yeah, see, I told you it was going to be quick, easy, and painless. It's 22 minutes. How great is that? So what I'll do, I'll hang around here for just a moment in case some folks want to ask me a question specifically about their project or um, you know anything you want to talk about. So I will um, hang around. And for those of you who are satisfied with the information, um, we will get out to you guys an email with the corrected date for summer, as well as um, explaining that we want all of your uh, reimbursements and pending claims on your uh, um, file, file your final report. And um, and for those who have asked for only, it would be the same for you for July. Even if those claims haven't been paid out to you yet, still put them on that final report. Um, any, anything that's pending, let us see what everything you have that's in the system paid out to you and that's in the system waiting to be paid to you. And if there is nothing else, we can dismiss and I'll just hang around in case there are any questions. Again, thank you for the work you guys are doing. This has been a very exciting time to see what you guys are uh, have been working on. And um, we'll be here until September 30th if you need us. So thank you so much. Uh, yes, ma'am, Danielle. Can you, uh, yeah. you can, if you have a question, if you can unmute yourself. If not, do I need to do it? Happy hump day. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm maintaining. Look, I feel I feel so much better than in the beginning. Uh, okay. <laughs> I feel like we, you know, you all have trained us so well. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for the grace. I appreciate it. <laughs> I know I probably. I can't speak for everybody else, but it's been, it was a serious learning curve. And, and I know like being that one entity was a big deal when other places might have most people get to do that. So I just want, like I said, I just want to thank you for that. But um, um, I was in, I'm anticipating that our funds will deplete um, through the summer, but um, I didn't, I didn't plan a, a second round for July as a result of that. But if I did offer programming options, um, or do you know if there are going to be any other funds that would be available? Um, or once it's gone, it's gone. Oh, yeah. Once these extra funds are gone, they're gone. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's over. Um, okay. if, you, if there are other funds available <laughs> through the agency, you can go to the agency's website, to their grants page, and any funding that's out there will be there. But most of the grants that come out of the Department of Ed are for school districts, or you need to be partnering with the school district, right? So, um, but out of our office, no, as I said, our office is is on, is on the downside. We're, we're closing out. This office will be defunct as of um, October 1. <laughs> Do you, do you anticipate any other um ones coming through? Um, coming through from where? Um, for the emergency uh, programs. No, my office is going to be disbanded. We won't even be here anymore. Oh after, my god! Uh, September thirtieth, absolutely. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> it is. <laughs> 
Well, well, we need to follow you where, where your office is going, wherever, wherever you're going next. We need to follow you. <laughs> well, when I get there, I'll let you know. Okay, wonderful. You follow, you follow me on LinkedIn, so you'll know when I get there. It, it, yeah. You, yeah. My bags it, are packing, but I hadn't made my, my, my final move yet. But it, but I'll, you'll know. But I, there are some other ones who, um, there's some other companies that do grants, and they, they don't realize the severity of education for um, the, the disadvantaged youth in South Carolina, like there's a, a big need, especially like um, on the other side of I-95 or the, the corridor of the shame, what they call it. Um, right. So would we be able to, I mean, like, do you know if you all can be connected through some of those? Um, like if we can connect, connect you with some of those people to jumpstart it here? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question, but just give me a call and we'll talk about that more. I'm not okay. sure I understand your question. Some other folks may have some more um, initiative specific questions. Give me okay. a call, but not today. Let it be I tomorrow. got it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I appreciate um, you. Thank you. No problem. I, I think we have Miss Shaw had a question. Marcella, did you have a question? Yes, I did. I oh, just wanted to get a little clarity on, because we have an after school and a summer. Um, so the after school, you're saying all um, claims need to be in by May, <clears throat> excuse me, 30th. Is that correct? No, the claims for okay. after school um, yeah. needs to be in by June 30th. June 30th. Okay. Yes. Yes. And That's then your after school. Right. Okay. And, and then, then for I you, since you also have a summer program, you won't submit mm -hmm. your final report till September. September. Yeah. September 5th. No, September 30th. The 5th is the final report, but that'll yeah. be for your okay. summer and after school. Yeah. Okay, but okay, but claims we can continue to submit up until the 30th. Um, I guess claims the question, yeah, I'm sorry. I guess the question that I have is like, you know, we can send the claims in up until um, September 30th, um, se September 5th for our um, summer. So we cannot spend any money and get reimbursed for it until uh, up until August 30th, correct? Not yeah. Mm -hmm. No, okay, so your program will end July 30th. So go ahead, when, you're, when your program start for summer, go ahead and start, you know, do your claims as you always did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just be sure that you have all the claims in the system okay. by August 30th. Okay. So, but, to, you know, if you're closing out, you know, because you may have payroll that's still running mm -hmm. um, in August from July. So once, you know, once just make sure everything for your summer school has been in, entered into the system by August 30th. Okay. And so we that means we can use ESSA funds up until August 30th. Because, no, you can okay, submit claims through August. Your okay. funds have to be used within the time period because remember on the RFP, yes. the summer project ends July 30th, but I'm giving you okay. two days grace because July 30th is in the middle of the week. So okay. all your claims, all your activities must be that are funded through ESSER must be completed by August 2nd. Okay, no no, no money reimbursed for activities after August 2nd. Exactly. Okay, yep. just, just want to clarify that. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem, thank you. Let's see. Will you be sharing with us any grants offered after the summer program? Um, as I said, the only, the grants that are available through the Department of Ed will be on their grants page. Um, but as for my office itself, we, we were set up just to handle ESSER. Are there any other questions? All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and log off, but if a question comes to you later, um, Shoot, a, shoot us an email at the ESSER reporting email, and we will work to get that this recording out to you. Um, I'm not going to say by the end of the week, but as quickly as we can, um, we have to get it um, transcribed, and we'll send out the updates with those dates from August 2nd and the uh, instructions on including everything in your quote report when we send out that email. And if there is nothing else, you guys have a great afternoon. Happy hump day. Thanks.